Welcome back folks to a brand new video. So this is going to be the bucket list series. I'm going to split it into four parts. First, we're gonna focus on Europe. And I can assure you, they're probably not going to be the places that you might have thought. So here are 18 beautiful bucket list places to visit in Europe. Next week, part two will be from around the world. Now, before you even watch this video, don't forget to hit that like button, obviously for the YouTube algorithm. Cliffs of Moher. Few places exemplify the raw, untamed beauty of islands west coast like the Cliffs of Moher. A natural wonder that reaches 702 feet at the highest point. And while you might recognize them as the Cliffs of Insanity from the 1987 classic The Princess Bride, this wonder is hardly fiction, as the cliffs are located just a 19 minute drive south of Galway. To get to the cliffs, you can rent a car or catch a shuttle bus from Doolin that will take you directly to the cliffs. It's a truly wonderful sight. The Isle of Mull. The Isle of Mull is known for its sandy beaches and quiet bays, with most visitors arriving via the colourful village of Tobermory. West Face and Finn Bay is the spot for you sundowners, while walking up the Isle's highest peak, Ben Moore rewards you with the views of sea locks. The Isle has attractions for all the family and offers a holiday where wildlife is around in every corner. As it's located off the west coast of Scotland, you are guaranteed some of the best views. Cinque Terra, Italy, a coastal area within Liguria, in the northwest of Italy. It's a string of centuries-old seaside villages on the rugged Italian Riviera coastline. In each of the five towns, colourful houses and vineyards cling to steep terraces. Harbours are filled with fishing boats, and trattorias turn out seafood specialities. Along with Liguria's region's famous source, pesto. So don't skip them just because they're busy. It's easily accessible by train connecting all five villages from Pisa or Genoa and even Rome. Yurkus Allah. Probably not a great place to swim, but this glacial lagoon in southeast Iceland offers boat tours among the icebergs floating in its waters. The best photo opportunities occur when the weather is bad. The murkier the skies, the bluer the icebergs appear. But once the boat tour is over, you can visit the aptly named Diamond Beach, where the lagoon flows out to the sea, and the black sands are strewn with transparent chunks of ice which have been carved out by nature itself, an ever-changing outdoor sculptor. The 
Faroe Islands. Located in the North Atlantic Ocean near Scotland are the Faroe Islands. Literally translating to Sheep Island, the mountainous region is made up of 18 islands in total and home to 70,000 sheep, outweighing the number of locals. But the island is strikingly beautiful, with picturesque mountains, jagged coastlines and green forests. Don't miss the waterfall, which looks straight out of a fairy tale, with water falling over rocky cliffs and a tiny village in the background. Up in Albania's northern reaches, not far from the border with Montenegro, is the tiny mountain village of Feth. Home to just a handful of residents and surrounded by the magnificent Albanian Alps, Feth is certainly isolated, but by no means lacking in things to do. Within the village itself, visitors will find the tower, a centuries-old lock-in tower, and in the surrounding national park, stunning waterfalls and the dramatic canyon await to be discovered. Santorini is stunningly beautiful with the main towns of Oya and Thera, perched precariously overlooking the Santorini caldera. While you can witness the famous sunsets, it is surely one of the most beautiful places in Greece. Super overcrowded though, but <laughs> folks, choose the time of year wisely due to the crowds of the Instagrammers. Paris is unarguably one of the most beautiful cities in the world, the capital of France of art and of fashion. There are thousands of things to do and see in Paris, and however much time you have, it won't be enough. You can climb to the top of the Eiffel Tower, or stroll down the Champs Elysees, or visit the Louvre. You can see the many different shows and exhibitions, or simply wander around some of the most fantastic gardens you will see. Paris reminds me of one phrase. Once is never enough. Meteora. There is no doubt that a visit to this impressive monastery's Meteora, perched atop massive boulders, is a must. Built by monks looking for absolute solitude, these monasteries offer mesmerizing views over the plains. While there are 27 monasteries in the region, only six are in operation and open to the public. Whether you decide to visit them by bus, by foot or by car, these are a must see. The Azores São Miguel is the most populous island in the Portuguese Azores, with a lively city centre and plenty of cultural excursions. But it's also named the Green Island thanks to its lush mountains that stretch out in every direction. 
from enchanting waterfalls to surreal crater lakes, amazing hiking trails, and of course, a UNESCO listed nature reserve. The Azores is one of the highlights of Europe and one not to be missed. Tatev Monastery. This 1,000 year old monastery has endured a history almost as dramatic as its clifftop setting, with imperial invaders taking turns ransacking it and even the odd earthquake shaking things up. The legend has it that the name comes from the time an apprentice fell from the tower and called out for God to give him wings. But one thing's for sure. This is one of the best things to see in Armenia. So its location atop an isolated plateau makes it one of the most visually spectacular tourist attractions in the Caucasus. So put that down on your bucket list. Neuschwanstein Castle. Few places on earth look more like a storybook illustration the Neuschweinstein Castle. With its towers and turrets, throne halls and its frescoes, it looks like it was plucked straight out of your favourite fairy tale. King Ludwig of Bavaria, or King Ludwig II of Bavaria, commissioned the Cliffside Castle in 1868. Unfortunately, he never saw the final Neuschweinstein Castle. Just for the record, I got a C- back in the days in school for German, when in fact I was an A student in French. He died in 1886 and the final towers weren't completed until 1892. Celia Landsfoss. Lying in the south of the island is Celia Landsfoss, one of Iceland's most famous and photographed natural attractions. Plunging deep some 60 meters off the top of a cliff, the stunning waterfall shimmers in the sun before merging in a cloud of spray with a pretty pool just below. So when visiting, a path leads you behind the waterfall, but do bring a raincoat as you will get absolutely soaking wet. So it's best in the summer months. Lauterbrunnen Lauterbrunnen is one of those typical postcard Swiss towns. It's nestled in a breathtaking valley and famed for its imposing rocky cliffs and roaring waterfalls, two of which are casually located in the heart of the settlement. Discovering its traditional architecture and colourful flower boxes is a must, and a holiday here is perfect for the outdoorsy type, with plenty of hiking opportunities and adventure activities, or simply just being present in the moment.
Cappadocia is a special type of landscape that has been sculpted by erosion over thousands of years, dated as far back as the 4th century. Today, what is left are unique villages, underground cities that once contained human habitat and beautiful valleys that go as far as the eye can see. The correct way to describe Cappadocia or Docia is actually moonscape because it looks otherworldly. You may never get a chance to visit another planet, but a visit to Cappadocia will make you forget your own planet Earth. Cator Montenegro. Nestled in between Croatia, Serbia, Kosovo, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and Albania, Montenegro is a Balkan gem with plenty to explore. With medieval towns, lakes, mountains, and canyons, you'll want to check it out on foot, so don't forget to pack your walking shoes. You can spend hours here just sauntering around, drinking in the atmosphere and absorbing sights such as the cathedral with its silver altar. But one of the alleys radiating off the main piazza takes you to the start of the ascent to the 9th century St. John's Fort. You can climb over a thousand steps to the fortress, which looks out over Kotor and the bay. Northern Lights, Finland. In Finland, the Northern Lights dancing up above is such a powerful and unique natural phenomenon. One of nature's most spectacular light shows. The Aurora Borealis is a once in a lifetime experience for many. The Northern Lights are visible on roughly 200 nights a year or every other clear night in Finnish Lapland. But in Finland, the nights are dark enough for Northern Lights viewing from late August to April. Seeing them requires clear skies and just a bit of luck. And the chances of seeing them get much better the further north that you go. Caucasus Mountains. After decades spent out of sight and out of mind for many travellers, due in part to limited infrastructure and intermittent conflict with neighbouring Russia, this former Soviet Republic is attracting travellers who are tired of crowded mountain trails in the Alps or reservation only vineyards in France. The best way to witness the diversity of Georgia's terrain is on hiking trails. Winding through the Greater Caucasus mountain range dividing Europe from Asia. But the focus here is on the Ushguli village, a village of 200 people, 7,000 feet above sea level. A tiny tumble down kind of place, but well worth the trip. <laughs> 